Glam Fam! Today we're going to be making a U part wig with this hair here. This is the Vogue hair. It's their virgin hair from Sam's Beauty. This is the natural straight hair in 24 inches. I'm also going to be using uh, needles and thread, some T pins, and a U part wig cap. And of course, over here, I've got a towel for all of my needles. I have my wig head wrapped in plastic because I am trying to get cotton all that. Now let me let you have a closer look at this hair. As you guys can see here, it's rather silky. This is 24 inches of hair and it does thin out a bit on the ends, but it's not excessive. Um, it does do a little bit of shedding though, but I will tell you the wefts are nice. Uh, here is the cap on the mannequin head. I do have it turned inside out and I have it T-pinned on each of the corners as well as on the ear tabs. Now on the top, I'm really not overly concerned. They do have a string that kind of holds it together across the front and you've got your U parting along here. Now we do have the elastic tabs, which is why it's turned inside out. So that way you can easily position that wig on your head and tighten it up if need be. So I'm going to start, and by the way, if you guys are looking for a more detailed tutorial, I'll put a link to my other wig making tutorial so you guys can see more of the inner workings. This one does kind of zoom through it, so uh, while it is in some ways beginner friendly, I would not consider it completely for beginners. <laughs> So you're going to start off by just attaching this to the nape of the unit and I'm going to stitch directly across that bottom line. Uh, you'll want to kind of see it evenly go across there um, all the way so that way if they're trying to pull their hair up later or anything like that, the very first thing you see is that hair underneath and not have it looking like beautiful because that's not cute. Can't have that. All your business showing in the back. Uh, so we're just going to stitch this across and I am doing a lock stitch which basically means instead of me just sewing through I'm actually bringing the needle um, underneath the thread and allowing it to kind of help lock in place so if it starts to loosen up the whole track isn't just popping out. So we're going to speed up a little bit because ain't nobody got time to watch all of this. Alright so still continuing that all the way across the nape. And you'll notice once I get to the end section, I'm gonna tie it off, but then I will take that track and turn it over. I'm not cutting the tracks because every time you cut, you have another section where the hair is gonna be more likely to shed. And this just kind of helps the hair to last longer, for it to stay fuller, look better, all of that loveliness. So you guys can see here, I've gone ahead and tied off. And then we're just gonna take that weft and turn it back around I'm gonna place another pin in there which is why I like to work on wig heads because I can't stab real people for some reason it's still against the law and from there we're gonna go ahead and stitch on back the other direction which I'm really not gonna show you guys the whole thing we'll skip forward from here because yeah I know you guys are not trying to watch every single step of me making this wig like I love y'all and of course you love me but let's be real did you really want to watch me do this for like two hours yeah, that's how long it took me. It was about two hours to make this unit. And I'll apologize now. My lovely daughters and my beautiful wife are walking around the background, in and out of the refrigerator, all kinds of stuff, the whole video. So be glad I'm doing a voiceover. All right, so once I get up to about where the, uh, the ear line would be, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue coming right on across. And you guys can see I'm just moving those pins on up to where I feel like it's beneficial for me to have it. So you guys can kind of see there, we're bringing it right on up. Now you want to be careful not to sew through the elastic uh, on the sides. If you're sewing through it, you're making it to where that cap cannot stretch very well. And here we just begin to bend it back and go the opposite direction. So it's not overly complicated, but I felt like you guys could possibly see a bit better from this angle. Hopefully it helps. And look here, boo, uh, we ran out of the first bundle. So what I do is I just keep that same thread on there. I'm gonna go ahead and feed another weft on. And then we just continue stitching like nothing ever happened. I know some of you are like, who was that in the bottom right corner? That's my wife holding our youngest daughter back there. And for all of you who leave those hateful comments on my videos, no, she's a real woman. Yes, I'm a real man. And no, we are not in some sort of open relationship and all that. We are a real couple. We've been married for almost 10 years. 
Oh, thank you for your congratulations. You're amazing. So right here around the ear tab, we're just going to go ahead and tilt down and I'm going to go with the curvature of the unit. Same thing along like with the nape. I want to make sure that we are getting a very clean line. So if the wind blows, your tracks are not showing. It just looks seamless and gives you a better blend. So I'm going to bring it up like that and stitch before I bring back around. So of course I sped it up because I didn't want to cut it out, but it wasn't necessary to do it in slow-mo either. Then from there, once I'd rounded that out, I'm just going to go ahead and continue curving it and sewing it on towards the back. I talk so much, you guys. So now that we've done that on both sides and I've brought it back, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up to just beneath. Uh, that's what happens when you pray for people a little too hard. They just slang on back. Uh, we're going to go just beneath where the U part uh, portion at the top stops. I'm going to stitch it down and then we'll bring it back down to curve uh, away from that line. Because we don't want it to be too bulky up there and create a massive amount of lumping. So I'm not going to take it all the way up. We're about half an inch off. And then we'll just bend it back and bring it back around. Do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Don't act like you don't know what's going on the other side. It's the same thing. Just mirror it. Flip it if you got to. Put your thing down. Flip it and reverse it. All right. So we're up here to the top. This is how much we have left. Just want you guys to see. Nothing too major. And we're just going to continue our same process on up this cap. Okay, so still stitching and we're just continuing that uh, from there We're gonna go ahead and get all the way up to the top and once you get along here You're gonna fold it across and I want you to go all the way along the edge of that seam This again comes down to it lying as flat as possible creating as little gap as possible So you are not showing as much of your business So I tried to have Allison hold the camera here and that way we could get in really close so you get way too far all up in the business. Um, you can see here, I end up running out of thread. Usually it's best to make sure you have enough thread so you don't have knots and bumps and things in there. But uh, thankfully this nylon thread is not like massively thick, which by the way, links to everything to include the hair will be in the description box below. So if you're interested in any of this, just check out down there. If you leave a comment, I'll just refer you back to the description box. I love you, but my fingers hurt from typing responses sometimes. And, you know, I don't need these fingers to fall off because obviously they're making money. Look at these wigs. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> we're just going to continue on all the way to the edge. Uh, you can either snip it at the end or you can fold it under and fill in that gap that you guys saw at the beginning, which is exactly what I ended up doing. Once we finish with that, I'm going to put these side combs, well these wig combs really into the unit i'm gonna put it in the nape we'll put it at the top of the u part they'll end up being uh one on the other side one in the center and then there'll be two by the ear tab so a total of six combs and they'll be stitched in like so and honestly this part's not that difficult but i knew someone was gonna ask me so i was like you know what i know i've got my visual learners here let me go ahead and show them how it was sewn in and um this is how I recommend holding it because you guys see letting it lay flat and trying to do it was uh, it was giving me hell. So we're just going to continue sewing right on through here. And once we have that done, uh, we're just going to continue it like five more times. Then I latched my uh, little elastics in there. You can see how the combs are attached. I did end up adding three more and I'll show you how those are in a moment. From there, you're going to cut that thread in between. Only do this when your wig is finished or you are going to need a lot more T-pins to hold that baby in place. What happens when you have cheap shears? Okay, so here we have six combs. I'm wanting you to see where they are. I've got one in the nape, uh, one by each ear just above, and then you've got the one in the middle and the two initial on the corners. I have a really lazy braid down pattern, which you can just do a French braid across, or you could do cornrows. Cornrows will give you the most security, but she's not wearing her hair like this uh, today. So I just was like, come here woman, sit down. And she was like, oh yes. And so this is what happened. So I want you guys to kind of see that I did leave out her perimeter, just so if the wind blows, it looks more natural. You can see her natural hairline. It just looks bomb because you know, she's bomb. 
All right, so we're gonna start off by placing that middle comb in there. I'm sorry you guys can't see everything, but I promise it's nothing overly special. And then you're just gonna slide that uh, the combs into that top anchor braid that I had there. Same thing with the ones around the ears, just sliding it into those anchor braids. Uh, I did already have it latched where the elastic was, and then you're just gonna make sure to insert your comb at the base. From there, the section that you left out up top and around the edges, which honestly, that U-shaping can be any size. I know someone's gonna ask. It's totally fine. If you want it to be uh, a smaller section, the wig will mold and all that. Um, here, I am brushing her hair in with this unit with a nylon bristle brush. Now here, if you wanna get more of a seamless blend, this is where you would go in and layer the wig. And honestly, I just wanted to show you guys how to make the unit in this one. I'll probably show you a separate video on how we curl and style this, but I do want you guys to kind of see how it goes on. I'll have her turn around in just a moment so you can see all the lovely uh, curves and edges and all of that. It's like a grand reveal, but look at this hair you guys. It is really nice hair uh, It does do a little bit of shedding, but it's nothing massive and Yeah, so I'll have her turn around and that way you guys can kind of see what's going on All right, so the thing that I like about it is this is something that is a very minimal tension You guys can see uh, it holds up pretty well in terms of like being able to stay in place all of that um you can take it and curl it, and it's something that's basically a pop-on-and-go. You can take it off, still get to the scalp. Don't have to worry about it being stitched on. However, comma, if you do want to stitch it on like a sew-in, there's always an option that's available to you, which would allow you, like for those clients that just don't follow instructions well, you can't get them to keep stuff on their head. Yeah, this is what to do. Now, you can put it in a ponytail like you guys can see here, off to the side, to the back, whatever. That's why I left out her edges, boo, because we will not be edgeless in Seattle. Not at all. So hopefully you guys like it. If so, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye and stay glam.